Hi everyone, welcome back to the, <laughs> Hi. To the Trifles podcast. Hello. Oh, so good of you to join us. Oh man, what a oh. thrill to be back. The oh. energy levels are sky high this morning. Set, settle down, because this is going to be... Strap oh. in, and strap it's on for the ride of your life. A banger. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't, don't get bucked off this wild ride. No. Do you remember the, do you remember the board game Buckaroo? I guess you'd call it a, a board game. The one where you had to um, yeah. load things onto a donkey. And when yeah. it, uh, there was like a hair trigger on it, and it would kick and shit would fucking go everywhere. Yes. Yeah, it's like that. I rem I remember I remember Buckaroo. I remember. It's definitely Buckaroo. a game, and it's a it's a game I played at my nan's house. You know, that's mm. that's how old we're talking here. And you know, along with Kaplunk and uh, Mouse all, Trap, all of those Mouse Trap. Mouse trap. Terrible oh, game. What a what a what, these things are still popular, you know. No, Almost. nobody's nobody's playing Mousetrap now. But they are though. Oh, no, my, ki my kids there's play the it. nostalgia it. value, right? Really? Like when you go to buy a board game for your uh, nine year old, you want to buy the board games that you played when you were nine. Oh, it's so bad though. I th if you remember back, it was just shit. It was a shit game. It, it, it was. It really was. <laughs> Buckaroo was a game where you had to pile shit, plastic shit, onto yeah. a, a springed plastic horse that at a certain point you would put too much on. Yep. You see. Much and like then it would... uh, Pop Up Pirate, which yes. actually was quite fun. I played that with the kids. But you can uh, tell which which sword is going to do it. Like the, it's got a bit more resistance, so you just don't put it in that hole. Quite funny. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. So the pop up pirate is the one where you stab him a certain you stab amount of him. times. Yeah, through the in a barrel. Then... He's he's smiling. I tell you what, he ain't smiling for long because you That's sometimes right. you stab him with a dagger. But yeah, you can tell when it's going to hit it if you feel very carefully. I may have watched too many episodes of The Lockpicking Lawyer on YouTube. Picked up some tips. <laughs> the right. Lockpicking Lawyer. Yeah. Walk me through this one. That I'm not familiar. You missed out. Hi, this is The Lockpicking Lawyer, and today we'll be looking at this. This padlock is made by blah, 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 and it's made of solid titanium with a plutonium core, and we're going to pick it in 10 seconds. And he, he is incredible. Like, he gets oh my God, this man. huge padlock that if you were any normal person or, or some kind of thief, you'd look at it and go, fucking hell, look at the size of that padlock. No way, mate. It's impossible. And he's like, binding on two, nothing on three, little click out of four. And there we go. And that didn't take long. It's like he literally does it in ten seconds. I I, I have so much respect That's for so people. Good. Who... That's such a good impression of him as well. We it's definitely so we talked about this like two months ago. Or three Man, months ago. like, but people who get into these things, like, but so into them, you know what I mean? Like where they have like. You know, like uh, like like radar tower talk, yeah, like yeah. associated with it and stuff, yeah. and it's just like I don't know, like I guess like we're kind of like that with games in a way, but still not as serious, not. you know, like but like these guys will just find this one thing that their brain just they love loves it. so yeah. much, like it's it's man, it's hilarious, isn't it? It's so. So funny. I I feel like it's a very uh, and I I don't want to sound sexist. It feels to me like I only know dudes that are like that. I know lots of women who were into something, but it always seems to be something where you think, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. But this dude has dedicated years of his life to lock picking. And I just I think, think I this think is such a dude thing to do. more afraid to nerd out, though, about yeah. it. It could right? be it. In the yeah, way yeah. that men it could do. Be it. I think it's embar not embarrassing, but certainly not. It's frowned upon to, to geek out the way that he does almost. And also, I think lock picking and him in general is an interesting thing. We see it as this sort of slightly. It looks feels a bit criminal. Do you know what I mean? It's this kind of thing that you see spies do and stuff on. He it, sells and so stuff. I don't know. It, ha it has a strange glamour. He sells a special kit for lock picking. A lock picking yeah. kit. And I'm thinking, yeah, does. as a lawyer, I mean, <laughs> I just think it's interesting. You would assume that he would be like, no, 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 you can't just sell this. But he sells like a lock picking kit. Yeah, but what's it like um, breaking and entering like and picking a lock and stuff? That is all within the realms of being illegal, right? Like, or, yeah, or is it I mean, like you're not allowed? You're not really meant to, right? He's hobby, you're he's told hobby picking. It's it's for helping the person who's locked himself out, right. not for or, or or lost their keys, not for not for. Not I for know, but like it, this, uh, this comes back to the superhero conversations. Like, yeah, he's invisible so that he can help people, but like you know, sometimes in his darkest moments, 
he's like standing in your room watching you get changed and you don't know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's that same thing. It's like, it's like uh, he, right. he wields this power, but who, it's who like 95% the of the police, time you know? being like, invisible yeah. is not helpful for his, for his like, yeah, I guess he's, it, it put, it, having a, specific, a very specific power like that is it useful for sort of very specific things, i.e. spying and information gathering. You know, it, he's not going to be able to lift a car or you know, he might accidentally get squashed by a, a crane, you know, in a warehouse yeah. when he's trying to spy on them. Do you know I mean, I reckon the amount of invisible guys have probably just being accidentally run over because people didn't see him. <laughs> He's just trapped and under stuff a like <laughs> Also, <laughs> oh, just, This is impossible. <laughs> what am I going to do? Exactly. I've got no oh, other powers. I hadn't yeah. thought about I know, the, like, uh... I feel like oftentimes, though, these guys are given superhuman strength as well, just casually. Well, otherwise, it, like you, you said, it's too dangerous. Man, so that be, would be... People would be bumping into them all the time. Like... Okay, imagine this, though. The invisible man falls down a well and after five days, they finally rescue him the news outlets must hate that right they must hate it when the invisible man falls down a well or whatever because the all the shots of them hoisting him out must just look insane right like they're hoisting out nothing <laughs> like there's no oh you God. don't get the satisfaction of seeing the face <laughs> of the person that was trapped oh in the God. well for five days or whatever so it's really you weird imagine it's like, like sky you news and you stuff even or just like oh, him. for fuck's sake they, we can't run this like this is no good we're not going to be able to see his face when he comes out of the well like, look at our tax money <laughs> gone on they, they hold a goddamn bucket out of a well we're meant to apply <laughs> That ridiculous. <laughs> I think the invisible man. Ah, oh, they'll tell you that. They always tell you that. We sent the invisible man to the moon. Look, here he is. Walking around on the moon. Yeah, right. I don't believe him. I think bullshit. I honestly think at like whilst being one of the best possible superpowers, it has to be the, one of the most risky superpowers as well, right? Because you could easily get yourself into some jams, and nobody's going to be able to help you. They can't fucking yeah, see yeah. you. You know, well, like are we saying he's invisible all the time? Like he's perma invis because the, the invisible you... man was invisible all the time. He it was not reversible. That's no, why he had to I wear the like, bandages, right? Around yeah, he had to yeah. wear the bandages or put like a some sort of costume on or something, right? So that people so could actually see. So he's also naked all the time. But yeah, when he's yeah, invisible, yeah. he is he is stark naked. Like, yeah, he which has is to be weird. So like they're pulling I mean, him out again, of the well. Like, he's new. It wouldn't work in like Canada. Do you know what I mean? You couldn't. You couldn't go. Yeah, he or, would have or, to live in a warm climate. Yeah, that for sure. Because you couldn't. You'd just be shivering. So already he's like so fucking... geographically limited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we're trying to find the invisible man. Okay, we can narrow it down. He's near the equator. We're pretty sure of this. <laughs> <laughs> but not not too hot, because otherwise the sweaty footprints oh, would give him man. away. Jeremy, yeah. has to, and he, it has if he's to standing be there like, drinking a glass of water, which he should be doing in that kind of temperature, they're going to be like, yeah. what the fuck is this water it's hydrate. Doing? He would have to sneak up on someone that's sitting at a cafe and just use their straw while they're not looking like, <laughs> just drink their drink <laughs> and then scuttle away. <laughs> would you have to bar him from playing football, for example? He'd be the best striker. He'd be impossible to mark. Yeah, he's true. All, he's always in space. And they'd just be like, oh, I guess that was the Invisible Man that scored that one. We can't see I him don't celebrating. Think he can but... kick the ball very hard with his bare feet, though. I mean, if you... It's, it's, yeah, but he doesn't uh, need do you know to. I mean? He just needs to be round the back. I mean, the, Also, the... people would be running into him all the fucking time, yeah, yeah. dude. Like, they can't see him and he's naked. He can, he can never win <laughs> yeah. a penalty. He can't win a penalty because you can't be sure if he dived. So he just has to be careful. But the goalie can't roll the ball out in order to kick it because the Invisible Man might be there. He just... No, but they in. could just see the... True. They could just see... They, but they can play around that, definitely. How can you play you, around do, an opposition player literally being invisible? I, it's, the, it's the ball game. You're watching the ball. Right, but he doesn't know? dribble. All he does is pop up at the back post. I mean, boxing unmarked. would be way worse. Yes, <laughs> yeah, like that. that's true. He couldn't, boxing he couldn't would let be him box bad, either. Yeah. He just well, I can, he could they, hit him in the balls would and be they okay, couldn't say. He would have to wear the gloves, actually, with boxing. Oh, but that's like, true. Like bare fists. You know, well, but he or could, like that. If he you did, never uh, see where it was coming he from. He could kick you right in the balls, and you'd have to take his word that he hadn't. Because he, the, the other guy would be like, that's a low blow. He just kicked me in the balls. And the ref would be like, I didn't see it. He's like, I'm telling you, yeah. this guy is kicking me in the balls over me, and over again. Let me again. feel your balls and see if they're tender. <laughs> and see if you've been kicked. You'd in have them. to put special yeah, let, uh, material just that try reacts. It. I can't feel anything. Let me rub a bit more around <laughs> the area. Jesus. Leave, it, leave, <laughs> it, leave Mike Tyson's <laughs> balls alone. <All> right. <laughs>
He's kicked me in the balls. That's twice. <laughs> he kicked me in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking invisible man. Oh man. I'm, I want to eat his heart. I want to eat his invisible heart with with an invisible spoon. Uh, we, we, mm. I think it'd be. I think it would be a a, a blessing and a curse. You know, like I, I I don't think I think there would be times as the the invisible man where I would be very very scared. But there'd be other times as the Invisible Man where I'd probably be pretty happy, and uh, equally other times as the Invisible Man where I, I would be very I'd horny eat as well. <laughs> invisible meat. <clears throat> do you know what I mean? You need to meet the would Invisible you drink, Woman. You need to meet an Invisible would you, Woman. Would you drink Invisible Water? No. no you'd, you'd, and so, I, I, as I understand it, when he eats something, like it's not clear whether you can see the food until it's been digested, sloshing around in his well, stomach. Well, no, because then you would see like, like, is his piss and his poo? Uh, no, no, invisible? no. Let's not. Let's, I'm not assuming the invisible see it man sloshing around his drug right. kit or whatever. I'm just saying, is if they invented invisible water, right. and invisible food, would you eat and drink it? No, no. Like, I but I would eat I, if they invented food, and I'm sure this that there is alternatives, but I'm too like dumb to research them. Also, maybe too scared to take them. But if I could, I've said this before too, and I maintain this. If I could eat, if I could take a pill, and that would give me oh, yeah. every all the <laughs> yeah. nutrients and everything from a full meal, and fill me up. And make me think that I've had a full meal. I would do that, man. So I, you just I, don't like eating. I I really I don't like eat. I I don't really like stopping to eat, and I don't like preparing food either. Like wow. I just I just no. want it to be done with. I would I, say it's one of the few pleasures that is universally appreciated by our species. Yeah, no, I I I, and I get that. You're just not into it. I am. A, well, I, I just we've am a, that unique to snowflake who just enjoy doesn't want to that. keep us alive. That is yeah. bizarre. <laughs> it is. I know it's a weird one, but like. I don't know. I, I just feel if, like there's other things I would just rather do. You know. Do you suppose part of it is that being a vegetarian, everything you eat sucks? No, it's a, it's not so much that. I think honestly, I think it's just having kids. It, it's mm. it's a big production. You know, like, and it, it feels like feel a lot of hassle. Then about like, how do you feel about? Imagine you could take a pill that would give you the same pleasure as having an orgasm. Mm -hmm. Would you just would you just take that instead? Does it no, cost money? Because having a wank is free. I'm just yeah, saying. no, I like I actually like uh, jacking off and uh, having sex and stuff like that's that's fine. Like okay. I think you know you want to keep doing that. It's well, whatever, I'm just but... well. The, th the problem is that is actually what these I, what what don't get me I, wrong. I've like never a, done I like a, the hardcore drugs. Like a big but... uh, family like Christmas dinner or whatever. I'll take those. Like I like those. They they're nice because but usually they're much some... more effort. Yeah, but somebody else has to do it. Sort of. Oh my god! <laughs> it's not normally me who has to do it. Right? No, that's fair enough. But you know, it's so just, are you it's saying everything. things taste worse when you've put the effort in? No, not even that. It's just like it just takes too long. Like he's uh, lazy. He's lazy. I'm lazy, and the whole process takes too long. You know, do all the washing up after and stuff as well. And I just feel like most evenings, I would just like to just you know. Okay, everybody, come for your meal pill, and then everybody just takes it, and then okay, it's bedtime. You know, like <laughs> done. I think it would just be much easier. You know, like um, there'd be more time for other activities, like jacking off and Good Lord. other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So I noticed there's some tumbleweeds in the room right now. I guess you guys don't agree, but I'm just... I'm I'm, I just don't know no, what no, it is. No, I'm just, just putting it out just, there. I'm sure. Sorry, I'm just, I've just, okay, if there are no, other well, parents out there, no, no, you no, have to know where I'm coming weeds. from on there's this one. There's not tumbleweeds. Right? I don't... I Honestly, I don't feel like this all the time either. It's just sometimes, you know? Like, mm. some... Like, like th th there's definitely, like, some weeks where you're just like, oh, man, you know, like... Got to like, I could eat gotta a like source the food, got to like prepare the food, got to <laughs> hope that the kids are going to like this food um, and then and do all the cleaning up after. And you just think, are you not yes. into like all of the, the, the cooking Milk things and, and food TV shows and stuff? Uh, not like, really. Not like, get, uh, like if they're on, I'll watch them. But like, I, I don't know, like, I, like the, the, I the stuff like I watch people... is more like, um, like, you know, like you guys know, like we like to watch The Apprentice and mm. and, uh, and mm. like Married at First Sight and stuff. But what I've come to realize about these shows is that I don't actually really like these shows. I like the viewing experience like with my wife or like, you right. know, with your, with your right. partner or whatever. You like, because we yes. joke like the, the whole the, time the, the, the we're chat. just like making yeah, fun yeah. of the contestants, joking right, around, right. can't believe it. And it's just like, it's like, it's like, it's our own episode of Gogglebox or something, right. but it's actually yeah. funny. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it's a, just a very enjoyable use oh of my time. God. And I love that's that. Nice. So yeah, I love, that's nice. why exactly. I love those shows. Like it's, 
Well, I think you're not alone. I think a lot of people over lockdown have spent a lot of time watching films and TV and doing these things at home with their partners. And and the same, because we went to the cinema and saw Batman um, this week. And the cinema, my God, it was... <laughs> oh, my it was, God. It was kind of... I've seen a few people complain about it, but like... There were just people with their phones on like day mode, you know, right in front of us, yeah. just browsing Reddit or like checking their email or like like fucking scanning through Instagram. Like, and there were people just getting up all the time. There were people just chatting at normal volume about things that were happening. They yeah. lost the like it, uh, ability to be not twats around other people. I think. Yeah, and I don't think they. I don't think. I think. I think if if any of them have been told, oh look. Could you just keep it quiet? They probably wouldn't mean. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. You know, but like, I think it's just people have just. Yeah, just it's almost be like cinema feels almost like it's become a throwaway experience. Like it's like you're annoyed that while you're there. <laughs> Maybe the movie wasn't gripping enough to keep people's attention, but certainly, um, certainly there was like a lot of people going out for peace. But it was long; it was three hours. But there, three oh, hours. My, that's, that's, three a, that hours. Is, that's a slog, honestly. Are you in a, in a theater, three hours is too much. I'd have three to break hours. that up. Um, I'd have to break that up into like three God, sessions. Why, why like, does it have to be so fucking home. long? But I swear <laughs> to God, people treat Batman. Filmmakers treat Batman like it's the fucking holy book, and you have to be reverential. It's fucking Batman, guys. I think the can, story is so fucking simple. Like uh, his parents die, he's a millionaire, and he becomes Batman. There's like, there's not much more to it, right? Like it also, doesn't go very deep. We I mean, know it's, it, the story it, of Batman. Like we've seen it in every Batman movie. But it's Don't a, need to have so an hour across on it. every Batman movie. Is it always the same story? Yes, it's the same. <laughs> okay, yeah, they do. That I don't know again. why they do it. Like why? Why do they keep bringing it back? Like I, I tell well, you, what I, I think mean, it is. It's, it's not quite that. They have a. They have a different guy right. this one's the riddler last well, time that's it not was different, the Joker, though. Blah, blah, blah. there's a there's a handful of batman movies where the riddler was the bad guy and the tv show and stuff too like so what the riddler just keeps coming back he's like okay here's what, here's yeah, what i think he's it different. is the riddler he's diaries uh try number 500 i'm gonna get him this time <laughs> besky batman <laughs> my god you're right here's, here's exactly. what i think it is right if you go back to the the comics there are a huge range of different kinds of Batman in all the comics. You're right. And some people You're like right. the Frank Miller version. Some people like this version. He's been version. reimagined and they, like three or four right, times. Right, but he's not been reimagined that wildly differently to the way he's pretty much always been. Like in the 80s, he got a lot darker and it became like... 80s and 90s Batman was literally just a shadow on the page that you might see his eyes... That's it. Like he became this incredibly dark figure, and a lot of people the became obsessed. Man. Yeah, almost like that. People became obsessed with making Batman as dark and gritty as possible. Yeah. Um, the Tim Burton I, did the 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 eighties Batman, the kitschy and, kind of, and then over the, the, the top. Danny DeVito Penguin Batman, right? Right. So which I was honestly, more like I, the TV show, the Adam yeah, West TV show? I honestly thought that 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 was a good look for Batman. I think that it probably for me peaked there. Like they could have just left it at that. So I, I, I like the Nolan ones. It's a similar ones gritty more. vibe, I dark, very good, dark. I, I actually thought the movie was pretty good. Um, but here's the thing: yeah. those filmmakers all want to be like, "Yeah, but this is my Batman." Like yeah. they all think they've got some fucking massive insider genius take. Yeah. on what Batman and, is meant to be and like. Yet, That's it. They just <laughs> fall into these Hollywood tropes. And yet. And, and there's so many like moments in that movie that are just in every movie. Like That's so, what I've so heard. For the example, script is very um, basic. Like it's super it's fucking like, straightforward. It's like formulaic as fuck. Uh, the, the, and Martin uh, has an app which is called like Pee Break or something. I can't remember what it's called, but basically it can you could it tells you when you can have a safely have a pee <laughs> in the cinema. Oh my god! Well, you should you go and use anything. the facilities for goodness' sake, not pee in the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, so. There was like this one bit and it was like, I don't know, two hours, 19 or something. And Martin's like, apparently the next three minutes is just an incredibly generic car chase. So you can go now. And I was like, all right. Nice. And so I, I went and came back and he was like, you missed literally nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, it was like a dark, gritty, shaky cam car chase. I was like, fuck me. Do you know what I, mean? I really feel like this app, though, they could use it to like prune movies. 
you know? Yeah. Just cut out all the chaff. Because people, some people listen to audiobooks and podcasts on like 1.5 speed. My, right? my mate just is at time, times two, everything. YouTube, just to get podcasts, through it all, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I reckon with, with this app, you could properly just z- zip zap f- through movies quicker, get through all the, the drafts, just get to the... He watches films does, with the subtitles on at two times speed. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some people like the car chase, but fuck no. Who the who is? I, I, does. Honestly, I mean, I've even a James so Bond many car, car chase is going to that I just don't keep really my need fucking attention. An interesting. Well, I don't even. I, I just don't find chases. car chases that interesting. And I'm at the point in my life now where I I I get stressed out by a car chase because I just think, <laughs> you know, that's really dangerous. They should not that's be chasing. That's really him. dangerous. There's yeah. a lot of people around. You know, like um, I I wouldn't want to be anywhere near that in real life so i thought that if you've seen the french connection which is an old film with gene hackman in it's really good uh the car chase very famous car chase in french connection it might even be french connection 2 but i think it's french connection 1 uh that's a really good car chase like really really good that's seen as Um, like one of the all-time greatest car chase scenes right exactly but it's like most car chases are just kind of shitty like they're just pretty boring especially because quite often it's just they're chasing each other, and now they're in a car oh, doing what they were doing when they were just that like. Reminds me of the old not, car chase from the Blues Brothers. Yeah, that's a, with the that's a great where they There's smash probably through a couple the, of notable James Bond car chases oh. in there as well, right? Like, but they, well, this is pretty much with the, with the sh- you know with he's going to make it. And, well, yes. you know he's going to yeah, make it. Yeah. Like I feel like if the car chase is just they were chasing on foot and now they're chasing on a in a car like in a in an on foot chase it's always the same at one point they'll run into a chain link fence and then climb over it and, and <laughs> at one right. point they'll yeah, run into yeah. a yard and the dog will be like whoa, whoa, whoa. they're like whoa. they'll go through someone's living room like there's just most chases are just they they you know they're not that interesting sometimes you get some good ones I thought that uh, the chase in seven was quite good when he's seven. chasing uh, the guy through. The building. They get to his apartment, and he turns up, and they think, "Oh, who's this guy?" And he's got like a paper bag, and then he just starts shooting at them, and then they chase after him, and in the end, he catches Brad Pitt, and he's got his gun to his his head, and he just walks away. That was quite a good, quite an exciting chase, and there was quite a lot at stake. I um, don't really remember that one. It was a good moment. It was quite yeah. a short chase, but it was quite good. I remember you Seven do, actually do being a chase. decent movie, though. Like, That's a great movie. I thought it was pretty it's a good. Great movie. Um, it's it's even though yeah. Brad Pitt can't act, he's quite good in it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I don't mind him though. Like, I I think it, honestly, some sometimes it's almost part of the appeal for me that the, that he can't act. You know, same, the same way I like watching <laughs> The Apprentice or whatever. Right. You know, it's just like it's 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 like an it's like an event. It's an experience. You know. Yeah, like you that. can't. You, it, there's certain things that pull you out of immersion, isn't there? We've talked about this before, yeah. where. I, I think that's so important to 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 have something that grips you, um, and and I think sometimes big celebrities are the opposite of that. They they're like, oh, it's because they got they got so much baggage, I guess, in in many ways. You're really like, oh, it's that guy who, from Harry Potter. Who are like the big it's, Hollywood it's, it's celebrities of the day? Like, I'm I'm so out of touch with nowadays. Like, I, I never watch movies, but like I remember. For example, like, uh, you know, in like the late 80s going into the 90s, you had like, you had like your um, Tom Cruise's, you had like uh, Robert De Niro, you know, all right. these guys were kind of well, like Tom Cruise is still big. A-list Hollywood, you know, you would you would want to see interviews with them and stuff. Mel Gibson before, right. you know, everybody Again, realized that Mel Gibson was Mel Gibson. Was insane. Yeah. I would say Dwayne The Rock Johnson is quite big. At the oh, moment. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The Rock. Tom yes. Hanks is still making a shitload of movies and very successful. Leonardo DiCaprio is probably a big movie star in most people's eyes, and I, yeah. I would say they would be right. Tom sure. Cruise is still box office. George Clooney's still pretty big. Brad Pitt's still pretty big. Matt Damon seems to be very successful. Yes, yeah, uh, Matt Damon. Gen- Jennifer been in Lawrence. Lot of stuff. Yeah, Jennifer Meryl Lawrence. Meryl Streep, I'd say. Denzel Meryl Washington. Street, really? Yeah, she's well, big. If she makes a movie, all... it's really fucking yeah, good. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Chris Pratt seems to be in everything. Uh, yes, that's okay, a- yeah, that's a good shout, actually. Chris Pratt is like, he's in yeah. all the big sort of Guardians of the Galaxy, Jurassic right. Park. Maybe his stuff. star has 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 shined, though. But yeah, Robert Pattinson obviously has been huge, and he's um, he's Batman, which and he does well on it. I'll say... Um, he does well on it. <laughs> he does well on it. <laughs> he, does, he does a good job. Yeah, it's weird, what like, is uh, a bit, I used to watch so he's many He's weird, he's got a great jawline, but you don't sort of see it like necessarily when he t- takes the mask off. He sort of goes from weirdly emo boy to, you know, gritty 
super badass. Apparently, like, he, 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 he did an he did a, a Batman voice, and they were like, "Please stop doing that." Like they well, told he him had like his own his yeah. own like. I just ate <laughs> my voice. Like that kind like of Like the McGarnacle and voice, but it's he was Batman. doing a, he was putting a voice on. And they were like, we'll see. Robert, stop that right now!" And he was like, "He still does it though. Okay. He still does yeah, it." Yeah, but like his original voice. I really wish I, I can't could place heard. this guy. When, when you guys say Robert Pattinson, for for some reason, I just think of uh, I'm, yeah, I, he's very generic. I can only imagine this like one specific. Uh, I don't even think Twilight. he works at the BBC anymore. But he's he was the like guy. A, Oh, you're fin- thinking of uh, Robert editors. Peston. Yes. <laughs> this is the guy that pops into my mind every time <laughs> that you mention this name. I can't picture the uh, the real person. Robert Peston. Yeah, the, the Batman. Yeah, the Batman. And uh, Zoe Kravitz was in it, who was... Um, who was the, I, she was she was really good. Zoe but man, Kravitz. did she remind me of Halle Berry's like Catwoman. Oh yeah, I Halle guess Berry was... What is it? That's Cr- like... Zoe, in the worst fucking oh, Zoe movie. Zoe Kravitz. Is it, I assume this is Lenny yeah. Kravitz and oh, she's the daughter of Lisa Bonet and Lenny Kravitz. All oh, right. Yeah, so yeah. Lisa Bonet, by the way, uh, who was big in the eighties. If you ever watched the Cosby Show, she was a big star in the day. Um, she is married to Jason Momoa. Who? Jason okay. Momoa was in in Game of Thrones. He was uh, Cal oh, yeah, Drogo. Jason Momoa. Yeah, right? he's huge. He's great. He's Hollywood. Jason... Yeah, he was. He's, everyone loves him. He was him. Merman in the Merman movie or whatever Jason the fuck. Jason Momoa. It's Aquaman. Aquaman. Yeah, Merman. Is this the, this is like this generation Steven Seagal? This guy looks like that. Jason Momoa. I don't yeah, think, he I don't looks, think he's, he's got Steven some Seagal. Seagal vibes. Not like not modern day Seagal. I don't know if you've seen so, Steven Seagal recently. So but... he is forty two. Right. All oh, right. Okay. He, Lisa Bonet is 54. It's quite unusual who's in Hollywood this, to who's have. Who's the other one? Lisa what? Lisa Bonet. B-O-N-E-T. Oh, yeah, she, she was big, big in the 80s. Yeah. yeah, she was big Lisa in the 80s. Lisa Bonet. She, oh, yeah, what's yeah. she been in? I've seen her in stuff. The Cosby Show. Of course. she plays, You just don't uh, listen, do you? This she, is unbelievable. <laughs> no, I just said that like 20 seconds ago. I know, but you're saying names and I'm looking them up as you're saying them, so I'm not listening to everything. <laughs> he's like, he's five minutes ago. Yeah, I'm still, still looking I'm up Robert still lagging behind. She was... So Lisa Bonet was the was uh, not the the old eldest sister. She right? was the eldest daughter. Yeah, yeah. eldest. But eldest then she daughter, left yeah. the show. She left because she show. thought oh, she was a big deal. Then she came back and they did that. She was show. in a different world as well. right? She was in a different world. With that Dwayne. was the offshoot. Dwayne. She was the offshoot. Yeah. Man, I loved that show. Yeah, it was a good show. I'm sure, it, it was, was really fucking good. awful. You know, I think it was. I, I think it ran for a little while. I don't think it was that bad. Had Marissa Tomei in in season one. Marissa well. Tomei, oh, big fan of Marissa, Marissa Tomei. Tomei. Big fan of Marissa Tomei. See, she, she was the half throb from Seinfeld, right? That's right. Yeah, Marissa she was the, the ma nua. The manure conversation was with Marissa Tomei. Wasn't That's it? right. Trying yeah, to find the, just the this... positives of the word manure. Marissa Tomei, the dreamboat. Yeah, yeah. Marissa she, Tomei she's is fifty-seven off. years old now. She's from Brooklyn, New York. She was born in 1964. Oh, is that true? Daughter of oh, Gary okay. A. Tomei and Patricia Addy Tomei, oh. and sister to Adam Tomei. So you know, you know, she she won an Oscar for My Cousin Vinny. Really? So get this: for her performance, Tomei was nominated as Best Supporting Actress and won over Miranda Richardson, Joan Plowright, Vanessa Redgrave, and Judy Davis. American film critic Rex Reed created controversy and a minor Hollywood myth when he suggested that Jack Palance had announced the wrong name after opening the envelope. While this allegation was repeatedly disproved, Tomei called this story extremely hurtful. Yeah, well, I bet she she looks great. She does look great. She's she's fifty seven years old. Old man. Aunt May in uh, in the Spider Man movie. She's she's fucking gorgeous. I fucking love Marissa to me. I would be her Jason Momoa to her. Jason Lisa you would be her Uncle Ben. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm a big fan. I was watching uh, Friday Night Dinners had a retrospective thing. Oh, the and, guy uh, Friday right. Night Dinners. The the dad from that was the dude Paul in Ritter, uh, Ch- yeah. in Chernobyl, right? And he passed yeah. away what last he year. He did die. Yeah, yeah. he did. Yeah. It's very sad. Yeah. He had a he had a real. He had a real career going actually before it's he such, died. It was such picking a shame. up, right? Really it was sad. just like he, yeah. yeah, he was doing all the big stuff. power moves, yeah. I think he could have been the new what's his name? Exactly. That lad. Hold on, that I always forget guy. his name because it's very forgettable, but I love him. He's a great actor. But the uh, guy that was in Mad Men and also in Chernobyl. No, he wasn't in. Chin- oh no, he was J- Jared Harris. I yeah, always that's forget the his name. One, Jared yeah. Harris. He was also in. Uh, he was also in that uh, sci-fi show, um, The Expanse. Foundation. 
Foundation. was in The Expanse for a bit as well, right? Oh, was he? Yeah. Okay, well, he was very good in Foundation. He's a, he's an excellent actor. He is, yeah. Uh, I, I really like him. I think That's we're why talking I can never about the remember same, his right? name. Jared... Yeah, yeah, Jared Harris, that guy. Jared but Harris. Paul Ritter, oh, yeah. Jared, Jared Harris. Harris was sort of not Didn't in anything Paul big, Ritter. and then God, he was suddenly him. in everything. We love them both. Paul Ritter could have been so, that. So, he was in Chernobyl, yeah. everybody fucking loved him. He would have popped up and been, oh, it's that guy. But then he died. It's fucking tragic, man. It is tragic, yeah. He he was he was popping off. He was doing all sorts of He was of popping off big time. He was... He was Comrade he, Diablo. Really tragic. He was, he was, he was, Safety first. He was going. I've been saying that for 25 years. That was a great, uh, <laughs> that was a great series. It was really good. Yeah. It was speaking of, show. uh, of, uh, of shows from, uh, from long past, and this is pro this is old news now, but I've only just come around to, to watch it. I watched the, uh, the, uh, 30 year anniversary reunion special for Fresh Prince of Bel-Air because my, oh, my kids it's have been watching it. Though. You can watch every episode of all six seasons on uh, iPlayer. And my, yeah. my kids love okay. it. They've been watching it. And I remember <laughs> I remember also watching it around the same age my, my son is now. But right. um, also, interestingly, they're studying the show at school, like as part of their, you know, like the same way we would have read like a book from like, you know, Catcher in the Rye or whatever. Uh, when they're we doing were at fresh school, prints. they're doing fresh prints. Yeah, they're oh like studying God. the cultural impact of fresh prints uh, thirty Jesus. years on. Which? But how old is your son? He's like eight. Ten. Ten. Yeah. This seems like a very detailed subject. Yeah, I don't to know. Maybe his teacher was impact. like a fan or something. But yeah, no, it's like they're fresh prints. It's like Come it's on. like really basic stuff, though. It sounds much more complicated. In season than it one is. of Fresh Prince, they had guest stars. Don Cheadle, they had Shaft, yeah. they had fucking Quincy Jones. Well, they Quincy had Jones Naomi is Campbell. executive producer. Evander Holyfield was well, all, like, of, all of the star the power came from, yeah, from yeah. Quincy Jones, though, because Quincy Jones is like this huge music mogul, well connected at the time was all was very well connected. So like this was his show, and you know he could he could pour like a ton of like star power into it at will, right. sort of thing. But uh, but it was also just it it was also just a very popular sort of show at the time when it came out. But uh, it's really interesting. There's lots of really interesting stories. Like oh, it's really interesting to see it, like you know Carlton and Hillary and uh, you know all the all the all all the cast. No no Uncle Phil because he passed away in like 2013 I think or or whatever. Like it was it was quite a while ago now. But um, they had like like both both Aunt Vibs because you know there was like. They they had a changeover after like halfway through like after the third season, and right. then they find out the story about the first Aunt Viv like what happened to her and stuff, and uh, it's really interesting. You could like it's like an hour and a bit. You can watch it on iPlayer if you haven't seen it, but it's 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 worth a watch for sure. It's really really nice little documentary about the show, like with all the the cast and interviews. Donald and Trump. Stuff. Is in an episode. Yeah. Yeah. And so are, so are Boys to Men. Boys oh, to Men, yeah. Boys Trump, to uh, men. I mean, Trump, uh, Trump was like... In, he was just like a celebrity 80s, Early 90s, he was a celebrity playboy, right? Like, yeah. Everybody actually thought that he fully was a billionaire. Maybe he wasn't at the time, I don't know. But like, yeah, he was like... He was on shows and stuff for sure. Like, he was just like a yeah, lad that he played the game. Went around and was a bit of a punchline. Yeah, like that's that's why he's fucking so angry because New York never accepted him. Really, he was always seen as a joke. Yeah, yeah. And so he's sort of furious about that. Yeah. He's a dickhead. He's he's always been a dickhead. He's in lots was, of old stuff though. Like he's in lots yeah. of old episodes. He's in, of, isn't he in Home Alone two or something? He pops up. Yeah, he, I think if he's you in watch Home Alone older 2. movies and older TV shows. I think he was probably on The up. Simpsons a couple of times. Or I can't really remember, but I, like you know what? I, like I, he anything he could be in, he he was in sort of thing around that time. I think he was just trying to build his profile or uh, he was obsessed with celebrities or i don't know what what the God, deal was but. his story is so it's weird, a weird like, guy, yeah. he, it does it does feel like he kind of just faked it till he make made Naked. it in some cases <laughs> he faked you know, it up, but just, had enough it had enough yeah. money like after because i spoke about the you inventing anna thing last last week like this whole world of kind of you have to you just, like 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 him ringing up the you know new york times rich list or whatever like you know, as his assistant, and you know, telling them how rich he was, yes. kind of thing. This sort of stuff that he did was so, I don't know, like both desperate and smart in a way. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, kind of, I don't know. It, it kind of it reeks of 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 like negative stuff, but at the same time, that's kind of it's like the politics game, right? It's how you play. You have to 
you have to get people you have to get people to think a certain way about you and you have to get people on your side and you have to get people to vote sort of i don't know it's it's strange it's, it's, it's an it's, odd it's, one isn't it it is weird it is it's building this this team of people who are who are who trust you as well right yes and and and, and, who, and who also enjoy drinking your bath water along with you yes i think so or at least think that they're there in the boat in that bath with yeah, you, right? at least, and so and then getting sprayed by some of the water, and it, and their initial responses are always protective of you, yeah. right? So rather than like, rather than like prickly, yes, you know, um, I think he's done amazing in in terms of just people just for some reason feeling that they have to be on his side, you know, yeah, like it's like a, I think it's a, it's a weird one, isn't it? It is so weird, so clever. Um, you are you almost a, sound like you bizarre. wish that you had done it yourself. Like, or that you could do it yourself. You have some. Oh. You have some life regrets in this area. You looking back, and I think you're I like, listening to this. I wish like, I could have gotten the- my, my secretary to ring up the New York Times rich list and <laughs> put in a but word. But it's all. It's all, but it, we we think about it as if it's this new thing, this fake news thing. You know, this fake this idea that you can spin out. You know, your image and and people won't do the research to call you on it, or 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 they'll take. You know, you can just you could just say bad news about things. Like I guess I was listening to this podcast um a while. Which ago one what was it called? The, was it called the Triforce? What I think it was actually just on the serial because serial got really Wait, popular. Did you listen to the podcast a of and immediately just without even thinking go out and buy um some self grooming um paraphernalia? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe like yeah, a, subscribe to a VPN service. Just spontaneous. Yeah. No, I'm just wondering. Yeah, um, so no, they they would there was a, this, in the serial podcast, which was mostly about murders. They've kind of often what t- what happens is these podcasts I listen to, they kind of they keep their podcast as like an enclosed story, and then they launch a new podcast with a new story about a new right, thing. Right. right, and so they have, and it's hard for them to direct people around to their new ones, right? Because they they tend to like after they finish the show, they'll put out like yeah. a little a little teaser for their new show or whatever. And I guess it's. It's tricky. Anyway, on the on the serial feed, they put out this completely different story about election fraud um, in this like in this American like little county, and I've been listening through it, and and it feels like there's this sort of because because it's 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 one of these small counties got like seventy thousand people in, and it's like sixty percent white, forty percent black, but because of that, um, and because of certain things that they've always done, like they've had the only place where you can vote in the area, the white area, right, and so. If black people want to vote, they have to drive half an hour to vote. It's kind of, and that's that's one of these ways of voter suppression, right? Like, there's loads of ways that you can suppress people's votes that aren't obvious, but one of them is having not enough polling stations, for example. Yeah. Um, and and so conventionally, this place was just incredibly white dominated, right? And um, the ways that they sort of and obviously what happened was there were a load of election scandals because the, the the black community got together, they got this sort of block and they started voting as a group. And everyone thought that was kind of, because it was so well organised, it just felt so like it shouldn't be allowed. But of course it's allowed. It's just politics, right? Politics is bringing together a group of people and getting them to vote the same way, right? right? That's um, why we have and so, political parties. That's literally yes, what that is. That, that is literally what that is. Um, but for some reason... Asking all the black people to vote the same way is a problem, um, and so the, the sort of the the white people rose up and started doing some of the things that that they were doing, but illegally. Mm. Um, they started like di- throwing away ballots and doing all these things, um, and of course they're sort of often it's it's a small town full of rumor, full of drama, full of like people accusing things about say the other the other side did this thing, the other side did this thing, um, and it's all just like little. Little kind of, and but 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 one of the the major problems is is that it's it really shows like how in a small town, rumors and fears have 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 persisted or been repeated, and sort of fanned the flames of drama in this place, often with no merit. Like there was this thing where there was this idea that that people in a nursing home. So the the idea was that the block had gone to this nursing home and. Got on all of the people in the nursing home to vote, and then taken all their ballots in, you know, for them yeah. kind of thing. And that was sort of this idea that was, you know, doesn't sound very ethical, right? 
Um, and but of course it, it was t- t- it was investigating. It turned out it was just a woman who worked there. A lot of the old folks were like, "Oh, can you help us vote?" <laughs> and she was like, "Okay." So she helped them, and you know it wasn't anything to do with the 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 block or anything like this. But of course, because it was a story and it was so incendiary, it's been repeated and repeated with no, you know, it was investigated and deemed to be nothing. But because like it, it so often these little stories come back over and over again and the people who were involved in them and investigated them, they've retired and moved on and the new people don't know about it and so when they are confronted on news like did you did they did was this this thing and they're like well i don't know and that means that means there was you know it's like you didn't investigate it you know it was suddenly like this 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 drama and it's it's so interesting to see how this this can happen right and i guess in our lives too like in communities of people you know rumors and and like small um things that that you think are terrible on the outset that are turn out to be nothing can still and uh, and despite this all this work you know all the people still believe that the, the 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 nursing home thing is real it's like it's it's all like a big a scam really it's like all fake news right everything's yeah. fake news but i guess fake news begins at the rumor mongery <clears throat> level and it always it, has yeah, been it, there it, in our human communities has, yeah. right it, ever since ever since caveman times you know this is Ugg just probably like, was uh, like the, have you heard that have you heard that you know mog like took the fucking um like the beef the beef brisket from, <laughs> beef brisket. from snog's no, cave do you know what i mean you don't take beef brisket you don't take brisket you take <laughs> you take man brisket you get hit on head with biggest rock exactly that kind of mark, shit <laughs> i've smashed him myself mark we're brisket we don't know about brisket what brisket oh no now you forget about brisket very convenient <laughs> Very convenient. Yeah. It's like caveman gaslighting. It just... <laughs> Mog, oh, yeah, like Mog. Yes, Ugg. We're brisket. What brisket? Oh, no. You make it up now. No, you pretend you don't brisket. know about brisket. I saw him with brisket last before sun went down. Kind of like descendants of Yoda or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Brisket you, brisket you. <laughs> and now brisket we don't have. Where is brisket? No, I know what you're saying, Lewis, but it's a, it's iterations, like with everything, right? It's an evolution. Like the, the, fa- the fa- fake news has always been there, but it, we... We we know it as it exists today, using the tools available today or whatever. And tomorrow it'll just be different. But it's the oldest trick in the book, right? Um, you know, trying to trying to convince people of something that is probably not true, but uh, you have this insane idea, and uh, and it's it's just about trying to get as many people on board as possible, right? That's like, yeah, and it's a wonderful switcheroo as well. Throughout, all throughout history that have hinged on just that. Like, uh, I mean, I look at the oldest trick in yeah. the book is to say, oh, you think the thing I did was wrong. These guys have been doing it way yeah. worse for the last yeah. 10 years. Go and look yeah. at them. Don't they call go that, go, the, why? The, what is that thing that Boris Johnson talked about, the, or people have accused him of, the, the dead cat thing? Yes. Well, I mean, Where, uh, I mean, that's like never been more apparent than now with, right. with everything. Like you literally, everybody's talking about something else, you just drop a dead cat on the exactly. table and that draws everyone's attention. And right? for Boris now, that has been the conflict in Ukraine. Because, uh, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, this guy was on his ass and on his way out, pretty much. And now nobody yeah. talks about it because there is just something a lot more newsworthy. I think that's just to speak convenient about. for him, though. Of I'm course, not accusing it is. him of, of masterminding. No, of course, media. he hasn't masterminded <laughs> anything. I would never accuse him of masterminding anything because he's a fucking idiot. But uh, yeah. but this has worked out perfectly for him because now nobody cares about him. What what rightfully yeah. so. I- but I mean, he is the prime minister. But like, it's yeah. you know what I mean. It's just uh, he's it's it's just it has worked out perfectly for him because there's something um, more important that everybody wants to talk about and think about and hear about than um, his sleazy cabinet. You know, it's just uh, mm. it's a shame, really. But but there you go. It's um it's it's all it's all part of this this big uh, this big machine right I, I tried tested and true one as well it's going on since the beginning of time so- do you remember do you remember that rumor that richard gear shoved the hamster up his ass for sexual gratification do you remember that <laughs> yeah 
Do you remember? Do you remember all of the? Was that in the Fresh Prince of Bel Air? <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember all of the iterations on that? Like he used a uh, he used a cardboard tube, like a like a toilet roll tube, right? Uh, to facilitate the hamster going in, and yes. uh, and 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 used a lighter so that his partner could see the hamster going in and farted and singed his <laughs> partner's <laughs> eyebrows and like like the, uh, like the stories just got more and more so apparently it was a gerbil right uh apparently that so the rumor goes that he once got a gerbil stuck up his ass and had to go to er to get it removed and that is it uh that's that the, that's false? the end of the story um it's apparently a, a real thing Gerbling apparently is a real thing, but it's only a rumored sexual practice right. on Wikipedia, um, right. and nobody's ever. It's a, like an urban legend. Although who came up with it, I don't fucking know. I don't it's know, but I mean, bizarre. even then, like, why do that? Of all the things that you could do, man, poor gerbil as well. Like Jesus, I, I, I don't think a gerbil really wants to, um, to I be. Mean, I mean, well, I honestly, apple. it's they've got little claws and teeth. Why would you? do it like yeah. just get a fucking vibrator if you're there you don't fucking put a gerbil up there so I, I don't think it's actually true um but yeah it there is there is something to do with with small animals that people do but i don't know if it's this okay i don't know how we got to that but <laughs> well, i think it's um, an important cultural touch yeah i feel like i should share some news with you about things that we talk about on this right. podcast a lot but just um, before you do, can I just make my point on. about why I brought that up? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I would love on, to man. hear this because okay. it seemed pretty random at I, the it, time. It came out of left field. not complaining, so, though. I'm not complaining. No, no, no. But that is a story that was almost 100% guaranteed to be complete bullshit. Oh, I see. But it yeah, still I, spread sorry, I see everywhere. What you mean, yeah. Right, it's still spread everywhere. That was pre-internet. Well, that was pre twenty-four hour news. That was just one of those things that got out there somehow. Might have been in the fucking National Enquirer or something. Who knows? Another one was Marilyn Manson having ribs removed so he could suck his own cock. You remember that one? Right. Uh, I also don't know if that almost mm, certainly yeah. made up. Yeah, right? I would say that that has to be. But well, because it was always a different person. Yes. Because according to what generation you are, it was a different. <laughs> I love that person. Prince or <laughs> Michael Jackson. That story just can apply to so many yeah. people, but like. It's absurd yeah, though yeah. as well, but I mean, I'm sure. I'm. Don't get me wrong. Mark Bolan, I think what, it was from T Rex. Well. Someone else. Yeah, yeah. There was. A, it was always a different singer yeah, who was having accused his ribs of having so that he could suck himself off. Anyway, what own, were you going to say, Lewis? Cock. We that was playgrounds. We were told that when yeah. we were like <laughs> yeah, eleven yeah, or twelve. Yeah. We we were that's and every 11 12 year old is told I know. this it's and, bizarre and, and you're right the actor changes um, every time for us it was yeah. it, when when that joke was circulating it was marilyn manson for us that was interestingly yeah. david bowie well, let's, never let's never know. factored into that equation but i would have believed it if it was bowie you know you would have thought that's the kind he of stuff was, he might have he done was i'm a big fan of bowie so <clears throat> yes in pokemon card mm. news oh, well, oh i didn't uh, realize we were going go this way this, go on. a man from georgia uh was charged um relatively recently off uh, and sentenced for just this week for for three years in prison over a fifty seven thousand dollar charizard so he applied for a covid disaster loan and then bought a single pokemon wow. card <laughs> <laughs> so that's what he went to prison for 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 defrauding the COVID disaster response, I loans think you got to be pretty worried if you're rocking card. up to jail at, with with that charge, right? Like you're you're immediately trying to role play and think up a a, a better excuse for you being. You wish you were the invisible man. You're just asking for it, right? Like I don't think any what you in for. <laughs> Um, um, <laughs> wait, well, well, you see, <laughs> <laughs> oh well, god! Well, excuse me. Um, you see, the thing is, Mr. Beefcake, it all started when I applied for emergency relief from COVID, um, <laughs> and that's why I bought the expensive Charizard card. <laughs> Would anybody like jumped. to play some Pokemon? I know all the rules. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so another star of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Martha Stewart. Yeah. You know her? She has launched oh, her she, own range of she NFTs, was, uh, she baby. She also did hard time as well, right? She did some for time, some, yeah. Some she did fraud. do some time. Yeah. And she was she sold a, a well, squirtle. She became she, quite good friends with Snoop Dogg at one point <laughs> as well, I seem to remember. Not surprised that she has. Yeah, she could definitely roll a joint, but I, I don't know whether she um, is in in on this. I guess she is now in on the NFT scam train. Right. Good for her. 
Um, ride that scam train. So it was, what is uh, it? You is it just a, an animated um, image? I'll say just to avoid any controversy of her. Um, you know, rolling one, lighting one, and smoking it, or or like, what's her? Does she have any? What's her What's her NFT? Or does she have a like a series or it's what? A yeah, picture of Richard Gear shoving a gerbil up her ass. Wow! And then and he's smoking a joint while doing it, and they're both in prison. That's got to be worth it's, something. It's honestly. a rare NFT. Yeah, that's got to be worth something. I think it's a line of images of her costumes carved into pumpkins. Please let's stop this, everybody. Let's get together collectively as a species and say, let's stop this. This is silly. Well, what else that's are we going to do though? Like it feels like. <laughs> so naturally, it's just going to come to this, do? and it's only going to get worse, let's face it. I mean, come on. We're going to be like see... 80, 90 years old, and it's it's just going to be non-stop. You're, you're going to have a sore neck from constantly your head dropping down and you shaking your head back and forth. What are you talking about? We're going to be back in the apocalypse. No. no, no Mug. No. Where is where is digital brisket? <laughs> it's just gonna be fucking <laughs> with like, my brisket NFT. Be, what what you talk about? Digital brisket never existed. What you uh, expect? Mark, where you put like, me NFT of different shaped rock? <laughs> me not seen NFT. Oh, now he hasn't seen NFT. Just like brisket, <laughs> brisket all over again. <laughs> Oh, man. This whole thing just is that's where we're going. We're going back to return to I monkey. I think that would Have you be seen this the best thing. thing. Uh, the worst case scenario is we all fucking die. So I'll take that. At least there's still people. We can get back to where we were. Yeah. Um, maybe. But uh, have you, do you know the return to monkey meme? No. no. Um, Here, let me look it up. Hang on a second. Is it, is monkey without a Y? Return Does everyone love to monkey. Oh, yeah. Return yes, to yes, monkey. Yes. A song by White Storm, apparently. Is that the one? No, Return to Monkey oh. meme. Oh yeah, this I no no I'm I'm on Know Your Meme. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I I think it's it's more sort of recently to do with people being like, fuck's sake, the world is the world is shit. Can we just return to monkey? Like return yes, to simple yes, times. I get it. Like like, d does that appeal to you? Nope. No. Uh, this one doesn't. You know, this taking one your clothes off, do it going back me. into the jungle. Living, living more Seems simply. Seems like a, nor a normie meme to me. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, fine. Okay, good. Didn't realize I was talking to the two hippest. The uh, hippest daddios the planet. this side of um, uh, Stinky's Peep Show. Oh, I did read an article this week about kids, actually. Oh, yeah. um, there's a, so some toddlers, uh, some kindergartners yeah. uh, and their elementary school teacher, I guess, have put together a hotline. Right. Where you can ring up and talk to a talk and ask a toddler, a kindergartner, your your like basically they might have a solution to your fears, anger, right. or sadness. This is ludicrous. Right? So you can have a pep talk from right. kids uh, because they're so positive, they're not. right? This is um, a myth. The teacher was inspired by her students' positive attitudes despite all they've been through across years of well, pandemics, they're positive, wildfires, but they're and also, other problems. Let's, let's remind ourselves, they are unfiltered as well. They are also ill-informed. And very I doubt that they're even really aware yeah. of this yeah. shit. If you can show me a six-year-old who's across all the global problems and really understands them and how to break it down why it's not that bad, go for it. But if they just say, I like ice cream, and that's meant to make me feel better. All right, I have a six-year-old no. daughter. If you FaceTime my daughter... That's a very fucking zen if you, response, If, if you FaceTime actually. my daughter right now, hoping to, like, relieve some anxiety or something, let me tell you how it would go. She would answer. <laughs> she would not say hello or anything. She would stare at you, okay? Right. And you would be awkwardly trying to break the ice somehow. Like Batman. So she's just <laughs> So you would probably say, like, hello, you. what's your name? Silence. She wouldn't answer you. What, I bet what, man. Um, I've, I've phoned the hotline because I want to feel better about myself. Can you help me? Silence. And this would go on for a good couple of minutes until she was comfortable enough to say, what's that on your face? Or something. And that would be the conversation. You would not feel better about yourself. You would feel like shit. That's yeah. a mole. My mum says yeah. I'm beautiful. That, that I, I mean, challenge me all you want, but most six-year-olds, that would be how it went down, I would say. So... Oh. Oh my god. Okay. Prepare yourself. If, if, right. if, if well, this is the journey well that you're taking, <laughs> you need to prepare yourself 
they can be pretty brutal six-year-olds right. and it only gets yeah. worse the older they get okay well i mean uh, maybe the pep talk is maybe you need yeah. to hear that jamie you know I mean? maybe the, the well, it's kids like a tough love sort of thing like that a boot adults camp. don't you're going to you you're know doing a zoom call boot camp um tough love yeah. yeah, it's like you know you need to be told that stuff, and and kids, you know, the filter may they always say this, and I don't know how true it is because I never spend any time <laughs> with children, but they have they have a they're supposed to have a more naive look on the world, a more simple look, and they say things that are you know like yeah, and it's inspirational. Do you not? No, do you not no think they that? do, Absolutely. but this Bollocks. stuff's kind of only tends to really happen five minutes before they're meant to go to bed. Otherwise, you you're not getting anything <laughs> they out of it. Come them. up with a big right. subject. Yes. And so what you're saying is you can never really learn great philosophical wisdom from them because the good things come out immediately. Only before under you the have threat of them having to the brush their teeth and go to bed would you ever get any of this gold that you're after. Um, just sad. it's just absolute right. bollocks the idea yeah. that some little kid is gonna fucking solve your problems no at gibberish oh I don't know though you know they, they got they're very they're very right, they are, again, yeah. where are you nice getting this from in what way they, I mean they're, they're, they're incredibly self-centered and selfish like I'm no offense I love my kids but they essentially if something isn't so like adults yeah, said yeah. you don't want to be reminded oh, of how self-centered they are yeah. so like Donald Trump and basically everyone yeah. who runs the world they're just, yeah they're like yeah. that like all le- like Boris Johnson, like yeah. all they leaders. They do not represent the we best of us. We can learn something no, from they them. they do not represent like some some ideal. We should be more like little kids who literally only care about themselves because that's you know they they're fucking little kids. They haven't figured I'm out there, empathy man. and I'm, stuff I'm like that. I'm already there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like that's not going to make me happier. That's going to remind me that essentially we are alone in the world, and and there are very few people out there who are going to help you or give a shit. Um, and it's a, a tragically lonely place, as most people discover. So, no, I, I think kids are an awful, awful way to improve your mood. If anything, uh, I think just fucking sitting back and watching some TV and just chilling out, having a having a bed. Well, thing, actually, cheer you up. Um, speaking of people being lonely in their flipping pandemic free time, the uh, Brandon Sanderson, our favorite yeah. writer, um, he has he's, he's sort of announced re- recently that he wrote four books during lockdown. Okay. He's prolific on top of the stuff that he said he was going to write. Is this and the Wheel of Time? Just no, Brandon Brandon Sanderson. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, sorry, he took over yeah, yeah. the Wheel, wheel of Time, time. Uh, but he did we all the, he's, the Wheel of Time. He's like off. the um, yeah, Stormlight he's, archive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, it's, it's very fantasy, but he's, he's very, he's very, very, very good. good. Apparently, I, I, I don't read. He's so. the best writer out there. <laughs> that's a, um, he's great. That's a love big him. Love claim. him. He wrote four, um, four, four, four books during um, lockdown. <laughs> during lockdown, and he's he's done a Kickstarter. Yeah, that's ridiculous. To self-publish them. Yeah, and he's he he wanted a he million dollars. Fifteen million. Well, it's, it's now 20. surpassed twenty-five oh. million dollars for a book. Yeah, yeah, Calm yeah. Calm down. You can I just know. buy the book. I know. I don't. Well, you know, I it you doesn't get take twenty-five them. million dollars to fuck. It. Why? This is shocking. No, but this is like it's like it's like a pre-order. Do you know what I mean you get the? Uh, I think that the, is absolutely old... shocking. I think that is shocking for for a guy who's already successful author many times over to then kickstart a book and not cap the kickstarter it's not going to take him a million bucks to write a book and then to make it to 25 million and be like oh thanks guys here's the book fuck off i think that's disgusting jeez what well, tell us how you really feel <laughs> yeah. man i think it's disgusting <laughs> well i i think like it's 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 obviously he i don't know what his what his motivation is but i i like people doing it themselves i like i like people Breaking like away the pu- from the, the chains, you know, the, the big, publishing chains and stuff. Yeah, the big boys. Yeah, the, the DIY. The it's like, the, the it's, like it's like nineteen eighty um, uh, Washington DC punk rock is what you're describing here, but for books. You know, you're talking. You're talking like <laughs> yeah, you know, like minor for threats. fantasy books. You're talking like bad brains. You're talking like uh, you know black flag and stuff, but for books. Yeah. Well, uh, but look, it's obviously. People are getting something out of it. It's 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 something they love. It shows how popular his writing is that people are that passionate about yeah about um his his stuff. And I I'm a big fan. I you know, like, I, d- I like I the whole independent uh, like yesterday. like thing. You know, like I, I like when people are good enough at something where they don't need to um you know and 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 nowadays it feels like it's even more possible than it would have been in the past, right? But like. To, to to self-publish a book or to or or now to like 
uh, release like an album, you know, like uh, self published on uh, and, like using like a platform like Spotify or something like that. I I I find all that really interesting. Like um and uh, and it's such a great story when it works too. You know, I like that. yeah. Um- I mean, some obviously you might not have heard of him, but he is a, a pretty big deal. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, that, and that's another thing. I think and when you can get to a point where you're big enough to do it, because like Radiohead kind of did that, didn't they? They were they were a pretty big band that just decided, oh, hang on, we're just going to do this ourselves. Like, and they and they did. Like, they don't have any. They're not like on, they're on their own label. They do all they put on all of their own uh, concerts and and shows and stuff like that. And uh, I think they're probably happier for it too, right? Like they don't have anyone to answer to. I heard some Nirvana on um, the new Batman really? movie actually. Um, yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. Places, they're a band that just doesn't like... seem to be going away. I still see young people with Nirvana t-shirts. Oh man! I, think, I mean, come on. They they had great songs though. Like they were they were a great band and. They'll never go away because Kurt Cobain died when he was like 27. Um, yeah. So he joins that club that, you know, Jimi Hendrix and Jim Morrison and I guess Amy Whitehouse is part of that as well, where it's like they still had so much more to give, so much potential. So like a lot of people are obsessed with what could have been. I don't you know? know if I don't know if Nirvana did. I mean, oh, they I had, don't know. They, it was, I, I can't remember the last time I listened to Nirvana and I loved them back in the yeah. day because I was a Kid. Yeah, of course. No, you like but, you mean, look back and you like you listen to some of their music, uh, whether you're you're a fan or not. You can appreciate like how it would have been as big as it as it was at the time, and, and yeah, you could only imagine it, that you know even uh, even like their last album, which you know you like depend on depending on what you like or whatever, you might not have seen it as like their strongest album, but it was still good. And, you know, there probably would have been more good stuff to come from that band, realistically. Mm. I think the lyrics for a lot of their songs are absolutely fucking awful. Well, yeah. And I think I think a lot of the time they're trying to commercialize um, that sort of 90s outrage. Oh, yeah. Um, well, no, the band was not at all. But uh, at the time, like everyone around them was definitely trying to commercialize everything about them because that was kind of the the the, the movement of the time american and, yeah. way yeah and, and, and still, it still is, is yeah but yeah. The, the the band themselves I mean, yeah, were it's no different. very very anti-commercial anything. any fucking tiktok star that gets a hint of popularity is swamped by publishers and and people coming along trying to trying to monetize any any well, every little our, thing our they eurovision on, entry this year is a TikTok man guy. flax there's some really great old footage of uh nirvana doing like uh the word and top of the pops and stuff where they were expected to go on and play smells like teen spirit because they became uh like in the public eye the band that plays smells like teen spirit and they hated playing it in the end because people were just obsessed with just that one song. Cause it was like the big popular song of the right. time or whatever. And they went on top of the pops and top of the pops were like, yeah, you, like no live music. Basically you can sing, but you, you can't play the instruments like because of the yeah, way yeah. the show is or whatever. That. And so he just did like this fucking Richard cheese. Like they were pretending to play the instruments and like, he was like yeah, blowing that, the yeah. mic and stuff. Oh man. Like they, they did so much stuff like that. It was, they were very, very funny. Like uh, just like purposely bombing interviews and stuff. Like they were very anti the whole thing. Um, and it was, but they still went on the show. Huh? But I think that in some ways, like that's out your, there's some guy behind it being like, God, can't they be more professional? But on the other on the other side, there's the guy being like, oh my God, actually, the more we do with this, the more fucking drama we make, the bigger we get. You know, they, they weren't in a vacuum. You know, there were people smashing up hotel rooms before them and uh, doing wild stuff to and swearing on TV before them. It was, you know, this was the 90s. It wasn't like yeah. it had never been done before. But I think, um, yeah, I think I think people had to some extent, they, they did still feel like yes. naughty kids, yeah. I don't know, in some ways. It's funny and that was appealing watch. to the generation who were who were. But it seems really juvenile you know, now looking back at it. It's like 
you know, they're making out like, oh, yeah, we don't care about sure. any of this. But they're still doing it. They're still promoting yeah, it. Sure. They're still selling their records. It, it, so it feels it feels phony. Yeah, but there was nobody else really doing it at that level at the time, which made it I don't think there's a way to well. not be phony, though. I think, I, honestly, with the, the Varna, it felt like they were the most genuinely troubled kids. No, I mean, he was like, like a massive around, heroin just addict having a for fucking, they all much were. of their success. Yeah, they, like it's, all they of those were, bands in the 90s they were, were like that. I just, I just think it was a vibe, and, rather. Like, I think it was a thing. And I, but I don't think I it's don't know, possible like, to It's not all those bands. It was one like, scene at the time. But, like, you're talking about the 90s, like, Tori Amos and, like, Boys to Men. And, like, you know, like, R&B right. was getting, like, super big. Like, uh, I don't know. It's not, like, it wasn't every band. Like, it was... This was kind of like the, um, you know, like the kids that listen to all of the the bands in the in the in the like the you know the big rock bands of the seventies and stuff like that. This was this was that sort of generation almost like dying out and paving the way for like different boy bands and shit like that to emerge in the nineties. Like I don't know. I guess the current the current train wreck sort of trend is is people like Lil Pump and his. Kind of, uh, for a, <laughs> yeah, with like the, like guys. replacing your all... teeth with diamonds and and why t- are they all yeah little? like getting face tattoos yeah, when like you're a sixteen face type tattoos thing. and stuff yeah I guess yeah I guess that's the new that's, that's the, definitely so like the modern you've got there here there, there is a fucking top ten ranking the artists called Lil something yeah because so, it's like Lil I, I just Romeo, know. Lil Pump, Little Lil Pain, Little like there's Little Caesars, like there's like a million Lils, right? There's there's so many. You got Lil Dicky, Lil Dicky, Lil Pump, yeah. Lil Yachty, Lil Bow Wow. Oh yeah, Lil, Lil, Lil Bow Wow. I forgot about Lil Peep, Lil TJ, Lil Cease, Lil B, Lil Uzi Vert, <laughs> Lil Baby. Lil Wayne and Lil Kim. Lil Wayne, of course. The ultimate. Can we Lil. stop with the Lil? Yeah. What is the deal? Lil. Just come up with something else. Well, it's just the, for every Lil, there's got to be a big out there. I want to see. But why big can't Wayne. he just be Uzi Vert? Where's, where's why can't big he just Wayne be Uzi Vert? Come on. What does the Lil mean? It must mean something. Where's Big Pump? It must. I, I gotta meet Big <laughs> Pump <laughs> and Big Bow Wow as well. Vert. Get Big Bow Wow and Big Pump in a room at the same time for me every time, please. I want moderate baby as well as little baby. <laughs> I want medium sus. It's like Goldilocks. M- median Wayne, we could go for. Yeah. Or, and mean Wayne and mode Wayne. Any st- statisticians out there might, might like that. Carry on. Somebody's been smoking my weed and it's all gone. I don't, I don't reckon these guys come up with their own names. Yes, they do. Though. I reckon they're given. Yeah, no, they're, they're not the given those names. Those are definitely their... like. Uh, a lot really? of them will just be. Yeah, they'll be names that they've had since they were uh, young or whatever. Like, well, but that's why. No one's going to be called old old pump when they're 13 no but they? like it's kind of weird mean? that you would hang on to that because like what when you're like 75 years old and you're still lil wayne you're not really lil anymore right like uh where, where's i guess it's like being called tom jr though do you tom mean? jr because that's now old if you're called junior god you're in your yeah. 80s right yeah because there's donald trump jr right isn't one of his kids donald yeah, trump that's jr true. i don't know Don, Donald right. Jr. Junior Fume. Donald. I hate that. That's such a fucking thing to do, is, isn't it? Mate? You don't want to have your own little Lewis Brinley, Lil Lewis, or Lewis Brinley <laughs> Jr. <laughs> oh, I, that's what I Lil, call him. Lil Lewis. Yeah, he Lil does, Lewis. He does, he does good work, yeah. Lil Lewis. Man, I, 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 yeah, I don't. Uh, don't rock reliable. it. Don't knock it until you try it. You know, like yeah, I think the world needs a Lil Lewis. I'll try not to. Or a Lewis Brinley. Lewis Brindley Jr. or Esquire. What's Esquire mean? Because you hear that sometimes too. I right? don't think that that's Ted, just a Ted thing you Theodore can put after your name. Esquire. I think that's just a. It's like saying Mister. You know, it's just a. It's a, it's a. It's Esquire. a subtitle. It's the. Uh, or a, it's a courtesy title. Yeah. If you get a letter from like uh, like the government over here, like say say like they send a letter to my son for a dentist appointment or something like that, they'll put his name and like Esquire. Uh, really? Yeah. I don't so know. So in the United Kingdom, Esquire historically was a title of respect accorded to men of higher social rank, particularly members of the landed gentry. Right. Some, somewhere above the rank of gentleman, but below the rank of knight. I, yeah, it's a, it seems but, to uh, be... Uh, you could just put it on your anything, yeah. though. You know, I can send a message to Ted Forsyth Esquire. I mean, as a joke. You know, and it will be... It's a courtesy it's title for any man joke, in a formal no. setting with no precise significance, yeah. usually as a right. suffix to his name. Yeah, so it used to be, That's if it. you were in the running for a knighthood, you'd be blah, blah, Esquire. 
I tell you right. what we should bring back Hang when we call um, kids young, young master. master. Young master Because I had an uncle that always, you know, s- s- called me Master Brindley. Young and master I, Brindley. It was, it was a very Batman-y <laughs> thing, because obviously that's yeah, yeah, what yeah. Alfred does, master isn't Wayne. it? You know. Like, you can only get away with that when you're very old. Like, you can't be 25 years old and going around and calling, so, like, a little kid, like, yeah, a master or whatever. Like, it doesn't work. You know, yeah. Once you can't old, be you can like a young parent. Shit. No, but I think it does because it's English. I think I think it's an English thing to call a young man master. I call know, my master kids Lovitz. like uh, master. I don't Lovitz. know like uh, about you, Flax, Good but work. like um, like I don't know what like if you just call your kids by name or whatever. But I always just call yes. It. Well, you're their dad. It's different. <laughs> no, no. But I I always call my kids like Mister or Mrs. One and two like, uh, uh, for whatever reason. Like I've I just very always... rarely call them by their actual name no i only call them by name if i'm really fucking mad it's it's always nicknames or if i really need their attention yeah uh but i've told you before about the whistle that (laughs) that i've developed to to it to get my kids attention so this has been working now for such a long time i don't know if i mentioned this before um i i i when dinner's ready in order to get their attention because they're always up in their rooms fucking farting about doing whatever i do that whistle up the stairs i can whistle quite loud i can't do the thing with the Whoop, you know, where you put your fingers in your mouth. Or yeah. that. But it's loud enough, echoes with the hallway, and it gets their attention. They come charging downstairs for dinner. Occasionally, I weaponize it and use it when I want them to do the dishwasher or something like that. But over a decade of training now, when they hear that whistle, their stomachs rumble, their mouths salivate. It is the Pavlovian response because it's always been wow. dinner. whistle, dinner. So they come downstairs and they're furious if there's no food. And my, my eldest was like, my mouth is literally salivating because I, I thought it was dinner time. I was like, no, 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 <laughs> 10 minutes till dinner. I need you to do the dishwasher first. They, they hit the roof. So we've had to lay, I've, I'm trying to develop other whistles for other occasions, and I only know that one. Oh my god! So I need to learn another. This whistle. is like sheepdog training. Come by, come by. Yeah, you got to. I've gotten really good at the, um, at the, at the. Instead of getting mad at my kids, I, I get, I do the, the disappointed thing. You know don't what I mean? Don't get mad. Get no, even. no. So like, you know, like, you know, when like I flax, you don't sound like you have this problem because you've had like the whistle with the coming down for dinner thing seems to work, but like. When we call my like our kids to the dinner table, they just ignore us. So we're just like, "All right, come on, it's like it's dinner, let's go." They'll right. ignore us. Nothing. And so yeah. and so we wait a little bit, and they're like, "All right, come on, second time, let's go, dinner time." Nothing. Like they wow. just you know carry on playing or you know just ignoring us or whatever. And then I'll just do like a really loud sigh. I'll just go. <sighs> oh, okay, fine. I guess just don't come for dinner then. That's fine. And then they come. <laughs> That's when they decide to to to, to rock in. Because you need to I, use the whole oh my god. It's, like it's, the, it's the it's the disappointment in my I voice. I know what the kind of thing you do. It's like, well, I guess the yeah. bin looks hungry. I, yes. I guess we could feed it, the bin your dinner. It's surprisingly effective. And then another one, another one that you can do. Like I don't like you must know this flax you know like your kids get excited about really dumb things or whatever so like you're, yeah, yeah. you're getting ready to leave the house your kids are probably younger than they are right now realistically because your kids are a bit older they probably don't do this much anymore but you're right. trying to leave the house and people are like getting their shoes and their coats on and stuff but then one of them is like break dancing the other one is like flailing around and like they're just not on <laughs> task at all right, right. um and, right. and you do that and you do that thing where you just like stop you look at them and you just go, okay. And that and immediately that's that's another cue for them to like spring into action. Going oh, quiet, going really quiet. Yeah, that, you just that's go, the, how they know it's serious. All right. And then like they know that you're like, okay, fuck, he is <laughs> really disappointed. Well, right now. I, I quivered yeah, a bit when you said yeah, that. Yeah, that triggered the delivery, something very me. important. The timing, very important as well, but it can be so I, effective. I, they're used to. I actually did have the brisket. <laughs> Take it back. Take it back, Dad. Don't hurt me. Oh, They're man. used to shouting. Like I'm, I'm loud by nature. I don't yell at my kids very often, but I am quite loud. So if we're talking or I'm telling them off, and and you know they they kind of tune it out. They learn to tune it out. So I've developed a couple of systems. First of all, very quietly, come here, come here, come over here, stand there. Oh, that's that's weird. Yeah, don't right. Like that. And they they suddenly like, oh, I am an actual trouble. Yeah, yeah. No, not that's... not just. Whose bloody shoes are these on the stairs? Can you please put them away? Not that. Not coming in from school, just dropping their coat on the floor. Can you please pick your coat up? Like, you've got to save this for actually big things like a bad report. 
for oh, example, yeah, yeah. Had, a, had our report yesterday. It was all done remotely. We had four minutes with each teacher, all set up in this online thing. You, you've got very, very carefully scheduled. You're seeing this person is a 4.15. Man, you've got to be like the dude from the Micro Machines commercial to deliver that report in four minutes, yeah. right? Like but the... you'd be surprised. Some teachers are like, yeah, they're doing really well. Any questions? You're like, not really. Um, <laughs> Do I have time to ask any if I had any anyway? <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> Sounds like, a, it was sounds like a visit to the GP. Yeah, Jesus it is, yeah. Christ. <laughs> but it's quite funny because some of the things that some teachers say, their experience with your kid is very different. And it's depending on what the subject is. So my daughter's really into computers, no surprise there. And the teacher for the computing and technology and stuff was gushing about, she was like, she's fantastic. She's doing so well. She's good at the programming that they're doing. And she's like finding one. She asked me a question about HTML the other day. I didn't know I had to go look it up. And we looked it up together and all this kind of stuff. I was like, brilliant. But then geography teacher was like, does Jean not like geography? I was like, oh no. I said, why? What is she doing? She's like, oh, she's just, she's always distracted and she's just kind of chatting and she did badly on this test. So yeah, I'll get her it, we, onto we some thought, hearts of iron, man. Like that right. was sorted out. How can I convince her that she needs to listen? So I got my office chair. We put it in uh, the bedroom with Mrs. F. She's got her office set up there. Put it in the middle of the room. So she had to sit in it like mastermind while we grilled her about how she'd been doing at school. She fucking paid attention then, I'll tell you what. I think you've got to come up with something mm, original each time do, to yeah. really get their attention. You do. It's, it's all good advice, Lewis. One of these days when little Lewis Jr., Lewis Brindley Jr., Lil Lewis is running around <laughs> and Lewis. he's getting ready to go to school and stuff like that, you'll think back to this moment. You'll think, holy crap, those guys, they they were been right. through yeah, the trenches. Gosh, they this, have experience. Like, this yeah. tips. Yeah, I'll be I'll be hitting you oh. guys up. I'll be dropping I'll be dropping Lil Lewis off. No, 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 you guys. no, there's no room here. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're full capacity. Sorry, we're busy. We're busy. Do you just look after no, him for a week? Are, go, we, 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 are, are, like, some, we are bursting at the seams over here. We, there's no I more just, room. I just don't want to do it. No, I'm going to be more honest. I don't <laughs> oh man, yeah, I, like honestly, oh. looking after somebody else's kid is uh, the, the worst. worst. Fuck the me. worst. Yeah, get them out. Anyway, I was only joking. That is great. Yeah. Great to hear. <laughs> right. Thank you. Uh, we'll see you next week, everyone. Yes. Um, thanks, thanks for joining us. Adios. Right. Muchachos. Bye. Love you.